next concept we are going to learn about is what we understand by a cumulative distribution function. A probability mass function gave us a probability of x taking a particular value xi. So, we assume that x takes values x1, x2, xn. If it takes finite number of values, it takes the values x1, x2, so forth. If it takes countably infinite number of values and the probability mass function or distribution just told us what is the probability with which x takes a particular value xi. That is what a distribution function tells us. In other words, it tells us that what is the chance of this random variable taking a particular value. But sometimes we might be interested in knowing, for example, we go back to this tossing the coin thrice and look at the solution here. So, you can see that I am counting the number of heads. So, I either have, so recall my sample space here was a head, 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 tail, head, tail, head, head, tail, 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 head, head, tail, head, tail, 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 head and a tail, tail, tail. Suppose I am interested in knowing what is the chance. So, this probability gave me what is the chance of me having one head. I can see that that corresponds to this outcome, this outcome and this outcome and which is 3 by 8. This is how we got a probability mass function. But now suppose I am interested in asking what is the chance that I have got at least one head. So, the way I am translating this is what is the chance that probability x is greater than or equal to 1? The chance of me getting at least one head is equal to this or I could also ask what is the chance of me getting prob at, at most one head in three tosses. So, in other way I am asking x is less than or equal to 1. So, instead of looking at what is the chance of x taking a particular value, we might be interested in knowing what is the chance of x is less than or equal to a particular value or greater than or equal to a particular value. To answer this question, we introduce what is known as a cumulative distribution function. As the name suggests, a cumulative distribution is that function which accumulates the probabilities at different points. So, this is a function. So, the minute we refer to a function, I need to understand the function is defined on what? This cumulative distribution function which is given by capital F, typically it is referred to as capital F, is defined for every real value and it takes values in the closed interval 0, 1. And how do we define it? For every real value, F of A is probability X is less than or equal to a. I repeat, a cumulative distribution function f can be repress, uh, expressed as f of a is probability x is less than or equal to a. So, given this f of a is defined for every value of a on my real line. So, let us look at an example. For example, if x is taking values whose possible values are x1, x2, x3. Let us start with a very simple example. x takes finite values 0 and 1 with probability 1 by 4 and 3 by 4. I know that the way my PMF is defined is probability x equal to 0 is 1 by 4. 
probability x equal to 1 is 3 by 4. It is a probability mass function because both of them add up to 1. And in addition, probability x equal to i is equal to 0 for all other i. So, this is equal to 0 for everything else. So, what is my chance? So, if I am going to map every point on my real line to this, then the way I can start is I look at my real line. I have a 0 here. So, till the point I have touched the 0, my probability is going to be 0 because I have defined probability x is equal to 0 for all points other than 0. At the point 0, I have a probability of 1 by 4 which is 0 0.25. At point 1, so, if I am looking at probability x is less than or equal to 0.1, I know that this can be probability x is less than or equal to 0 plus probability x equal to 0.1 is 0, but probability x is less than or equal to 0 plus probability x is equal to 0.1, I can see that this I already know is 1 by 4, this is 0. So, this would also be 1 by 4. 4. At point 2, it will again be 1 by 4. At point 5, it will again be 1 by 4. At point 6, it will again be 1 by 4. So, it continues to be 0.4 till the time it hits 1. At x equal to 1, it takes a probability 3 by 4. So, what happens? Probability x is less than or equal to 1 is the same as probability x equal to 0 plus probability x equal to 1. So, it jumps and it takes. So, this if this value is 0.25, this value is going to be 1. It is jumping at this value and you can see that it continues to take the value 1 after that. So, this is what is called a cumulative distribution function. So, what is a distribution function? In the case of a discrete random variable which takes values x1 which is less than x2 which is strictly less than x3, this is a step function. So, now let us look at another example. For example, I have x which takes values 1, 2, 3, 4. This is my x1 which is strictly less than x2 which is strictly less than x3 which is strictly less than x4. This is the value. First step, let us check if it is a probability mass function. Yes, 1 by 4, 3 by 4, 3 by 4 is nothing but 4 by 3 by 4 is nothing but 6 by 8, 6 plus 1, 7, 7 plus 1, 8, 8 by 8. So, it is a probability mass function. All of them are non-negative. So, it is a probability mass function. So, now again recall I define f of a to be probability x is less than or equal to a. Now, let us start with the following. I need to define f of a for all values of a. Okay. So, for what is it? So, let me start with a is less than 1. So, if I go back, I have 1 here, I have 2 here, I have 3 here, I have 4 here. For all a is less than 1, I know probability of x taking any of the values here is equal to 0 because x takes only discrete values 1, 2, 3, 4. So, it is going to be 0. So, I know that let me use a different color here. So, I know that till it so, I know that the probability or f of a which is given by the red line is going to be 0 till it hits 1. So, this would be 0. So, f of a is going to be 0 as long as a is less than 1. Now, let me have this 
portion here which is f of a. So, I am going to write down my f of a here. So, I know f of a is 0 as long as a is less than 1. Now, let us look at the interval. Once it hits a, it takes the value 0.25. So, let me have a 0.25 here. This is a 0.5. This is a 0.75. This is 1. This is a 0.25 and it continues till x goes to 1. So, this is what is my value. So, it takes the value 1 by 4 for a is between 1 and 2. So, again I will plot it using my red line. So, I know that what is it? Between 1 and 2 it is going to be. Now, there is a discontinuity here and that I am just going to show by dotted lines. Now, when I hit 2, the probability of x less than or equal to, so it is again it goes from 1 by, 1 by 4 plus 1 by 2, which is nothing but 1 by 4 plus 1 by 2 is, this is 2 by 4. So, I have a 3 by 4, okay, which is 0.75. So, I have a probability x is less than 2. It goes here. It continues with the same probability till it hits 3. So, I have a probability which I write as 3 by 4 for 2 is less than or equal to a is less than 3. Once it hits 3, so this 6, this is nothing but 6 by 8. So, it becomes 7 by 8. So, again what happens to my graph from 3 to 4? It is 7 by 8 which is very close to this. Again, there is a discontinuity here. After x equal to 4, it continues with 1. There is a discontinuity here. So, this is how the cumulative, so what do I have here for a, so I will have 7 by 8 for 3 is less than or equal to a is less than 4 and 1 for 4 is less than or equal to a and this is what I have plotted here. I know that the plot of this function is what we, it resembles a step. Hence, it is called a step function. We can see that there are discontinuities which I have shown by the dotted line here. So, you can see that this is my f of a which was 1 by 4, 3 by 4, 7 by 8 and 1. Another thing which you should notice is the size of the step. What is the size of a step here? The size of the step here was 0.75 to 0.25 which is 0.5 which is the probability of x equal to 2. The size of the step here is 0.25 which is the probability of x equal to 1. The size of the step here is 1 by 8. The size of the step here is 1 by 8 which are the probability of x equal to 3 and probability x equal to 4 and that is what we have here. The size of the step at any of the values is equal to the probability that x assumes at that particular value. And what are the values that x assumes? x assumes 1, 2, 3, 4. So, that is how you can see that this is the step function. Again, for x is less than or equal to 1, it was 0. This is 0 0.25. This is 0 0.75. This is 1. 3 by 6, 7 by 8 and after x equal to 4 it continues. So, this is defined for all values of my a. So, the cumulative distribution function is defined for all real values of a and the graph of a cumulative distribution function in the case of a discrete random variable which takes values x1, x2, xn such that x1 is less than or equal to x2 is less than 
less than x2 is less than xn, the distribution, the cumulative distribution is a step function. So, in summary, what we have seen is we have seen so far. What is the probability mass function? So, given a random variable which takes countably finite or infinite values associated with each one of the values, I define what is the probability of x taking a particular value. I can represent it in a tabular form or I can illustrate it by the values of x on the x axis and the probability of x on the y axis. This is referred to as the graph of the PMF. For example, if it takes x1, x2, xn with probabilities p1, p2 and pn, I know that this is the graph of the probability mass function. From the graph, I can describe the distribution. By describing the distribution, I can see whether the distribution is uniform, whether it is symmetric, whether it is skewed. These are the things which we can see from the distribution. And then we further defined what was the probability cumulative distribution function. This we define for every value or real value of a, which is nothing but probability x is less than or equal to a. And in the case the random variable takes x1, x2, xn with x1 strictly less than x2 is strictly less than xn, then we saw that the graph of this cumulative distribution function is a step function. Many books refer to the probability mass function as PMF and cumulative distribution function as CDF. We need these concepts to understand the bigger inferential statistics part, but this at a conceptual level you need to understand what is a probability mass function and what is a cumulative distribution function. The next question we are going to answer is again I said we are interested in answering or we are interested in knowing questions about typically we would be interested in answering questions about. So, I know now what is a random variable. I know again what is the variable which the values this variable takes. So, now the next thing which we are going to understand is, suppose I am interested in knowing from a population I take a random sample of people and the question I ask them is how many credit cards they own. Again, there is a count of the number. So, I can model the response which is the number of credit cards owned by a person as a random variable. In particular, I can model it as a discrete random variable. So, we will next look at an application of how to use the concept of both the probability mass function and the probability cumulative distribution function to answer questions from a real application which is about the number of credit cards a person uses. This is what we will be doing next.